1984, he was 31 years old. And uh, my dad was, um, he was still doing his photography gig, but he was also a PE teacher at a local high school. And um, he was like really into just kind of like um, health and fitness and working out. So my dad was in the best shape of his life. And uh, he decided that he would put his training to use and try to find a way to get out of Cuba on a boat. So the plan was he had a friend that was a fisherman and he had access to a motorboat because fishermen could rent small motorboats and they could go out to, you know, like a little north of El Malecón, fish for like an hour, two hours and bring the boat back. And um, the government, the people in charge of the boats would give you just enough gas to be able to make it to and from. My dad luckily worked at a gas station and the fact that his friend had the boat worked out really well. So, you know, what else are you gonna do but get two more people like, hey, we have this plan, like check it out um, around like five, six o'clock. It's like the end of the day, regulations on like the boats are lax. You can stay a little longer, fish a little longer. People wanna go home after a certain amount of time. They give you the keys and expect you to lock out. Um, so you drive the boat out and then what my dad was gonna do is from the other side, get a tank of gas, about three gallons, and swim out with it about like 150, 200 yards. And then from there, just get on the boat, go as far as you can, and try to row the rest of the way in case the gas doesn't run it. So everything was going well, the plans were going fine until one day um, my dad was approached by um, essentially like a military member. He was like, we know what you're gonna do and you're under arrest. The charge was conspiring against the state and he was thrown in jail for three years. He gets out of jail and the first day he gets out of jail, he's thinking, well, what now? And he decides that he's gonna give it another try and he's gonna try to escape again. And this is about, this is 1987 now. So he's, again, he's like training, he's swimming, he's getting everything panned out. 1988 comes around, everything is ready, everything is set. He gets his friend with the boat, two other friends, and the dog, and he goes on this mission, gets the boat, they manage out, they leave at like 10 p.m. where like no one's around, so there's less of a chance of getting caught. So they take this boat, the first three, four hours, it's smooth sailing, everything's fine. Sure enough, at 3 a.m., what would happen but a giant storm break out in the middle of the sea? Um, the boat doesn't flip over. They manage to stabilize it. It's fine. Um, the storm subsides. So eventually, the boat runs out of gas. doesn't take long. Most of it probably ran out during the storm itself. Three hours into rowing. This is like 6, 7 a.m. They run into a French yacht. One of his friends, luckily, spoke a little bit of French. But luckily, that wasn't super necessary because one of the Frenchmen on the boat spoke a little bit of Spanish. So they kind of pieced everything together and they're like, we'll just drop you off. So they picked up everyone from the boat, the four guys and the dog. They made it to Key West. They went into the office. One of my dad's friends called one of his friends that lived in Miami and um, two of them went their separate ways and my dad stayed with one of his friends. And uh, from there, he began to kind of establish himself.